Hey guys, it's Sash and welcome to the third episode of my journey to Max Town Hall 11. As you can see, I currently still have my Grand Warden, he's still at level 5. And uh, this is also day 3 of my journey, but I still also just upgraded my laboratory uh, like 4 hours ago. It's going to level 9 now, so that's great. It costed me 6 million elixir, uh, but that's cool because I can't wait to try out level 3 witches, uh, especially for wars. It's going to be very good at 3 starring Town Hall 10s. I also have my Eagle Artillery going to level 2 and my 4th Expo also uh, building. Not level 2, it's going to level 1, it's actually building. Uh, so currently I'm also upgrading my elixir storage, one of them to level 12 and I'm going to be focusing on that. I'm going to be focusing on maxing out all my storages because if I want level 20 Grand Warden then I'm going to need all of them at level 12 so that I can upgrade him to level 20. Same thing with my gold storage, I'm going to have to focus on them as well, upgrade all of them to level tw uh, 12 so that I can then upgrade my Eagle Artillery to level 2 because it costs 10 million gold uh, to upgrade it to level 2. So in this episode, I want to discuss more about my attacks, my attack strategy, uh, my play style, and the methods I use for farming here in Town Hall 11. So as you guys know, my preferred attack uh, composition consists of giants, barbarians, and archers, uh, witches, and of course all my heroes. Now the reason I'm using barbarians and archers is because they're very efficient, they cost very little elixir, take very little time to cook, so that means I get to do a lot of raids in less time. And the reason I like using giants is because giants are very good at shielding for my heroes, especially my archer queen. Uh, the giants are very good at shielding for her, shielding damage from uh, defenses. So uh, they're very good for that. And they also cook very quickly. A lot of people don't know this. They think that giants uh, take too long. But in actuality, giants cook they train faster than archers. Why? Because it takes uh, two minutes to cook one giant, but it takes up five housing spaces. So two minutes divided by five housing spaces is uh, 120 divided by five. That's 24 seconds. Well, it takes 25 seconds to cook one archer, which occupies one housing space. So as you can see, in terms of in terms of efficiency, giants are actually faster. So against this space, I totally annihilated this guy and got over. In total, I got over 700,000 uh, plus the loot bonus since I 100%ed this guy. I got all the loot bonus from Masters Three, which is 110,000 gold plus 110,000 elixir. So in total, I made around 900,000. Uh, over 900,000 total. So here we have this dude offering me lots of resources, 385,000 gold, 349,000 elixir, awesome. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create three entry points at the south, open up three sections with uh, wall breakers so that I can uh, focus on funneling my uh, heroes towards the core. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send barbarians and archers on the sides to remove the side structures so that my heroes can focus on getting inside the core. And also keep in mind that I'm using earthquake spells and I'm also using witches which cost a lot of elixir, dark elixir. So if you're in need of dark elixir, you don't really have to cook them. You can uh, just focus on uh, cooking jump spell instead if you don't want to waste your dark elixir. That's up to you. Uh, it, it's going to work the same anyway. So here I'm going to use a rage spell and assist them all in breaking through the whole base. This base has basically max Town Hall 8 defenses, some Town Hall 9 defenses, but um, mostly just Town Hall 8 defenses. So I know right off the bat, I know that I can easily three star this guy, uh, even with just Barbarians and Archers. So here I use the Eternal Tome ability, and the reason I used it there is because of the splash damage, the mortar. And the Eternal Tome ability protects my Barbarians and Archers from that splash damage, so I can use that Eternal Tome ability to protect them for like three and a half seconds since it's at level one. So once I get my level, uh, once I get my warden to level 20, it's gonna be a blast having that eternal tome uh, and also the life aura ability buffing my barch troops even more. Okay, here we have Donny from Oversoul, and he's also offering me around 300,000 each of gold and elixir. So again, I'm going to attack from the south, try to open that three entry points, but also funnel my heroes in by first removing the side structures. As you can see, I removed the side structures, now I can send out my heroes, and now they're going to focus towards the core. Now I can drop my uh, 
earthquake spell here but I'm not going to because those walls are fairly easy to break with the raid spell assisted with a bunch of my troops so I'm, I'm just gonna save my earthquake spells there and here I'm gonna activate my eternal tome ability right at the point when my barbarian king got targeted by that single target inferno and also a bunch of defenses targeting my troops so perfect use of the eternal tome here and now I have all my troops in the core which is awesome because now they can uh, basically wreck the whole base from inside out and uh, I'm, I currently have 200,000 gold, 187,000 elixir, and there's nothing this guy can do. As you can see, again, Town Hall 8 level defenses, so really nothing he can do even against Barbarians and Archers. Because level 7 Barbarians and Archers destroy Town Hall 8 defenses very easily. Okay, here we have Jupiter offering me over 600,000 in total resource. So I'm going to open up two entry points at the south and spread out my Barbarians and Archers. And you really want to spread out your Barbarians and Archers. You don't want to clump them because they are very weak to splash damage. So you always want to make sure to spread them. I don't have my level 40 heroes for this raid, but take a look at his defenses. They're not even max Town Hall 8 level yet. So I know uh, right from that that I don't need my level 40 heroes. I can just let my level 7 barge do the work. And... Uh, his mortars are also level 6 so that means that my archers can sustain uh, those the, the splash damage and live off of that. And not to mention the Grand Warden is excellent uh, with Barbarians, Archers, Giants, those troops because of his ability the Life Aura it buffs their HP. So it just allows them to live uh, a bit longer. So I didn't even have to use a uh, Rage spell here as all my troops have basically destroyed the whole base. Okay, check this out. My first attack against the Town Hall 11 base with the Eagle Artillery and the Grand Warden on defense. Now, the main reason I attack this base is just for fun, uh, just to uh, gain some experience as to what it's like attacking a Town Hall 11 base. Now, take into account, I'm using a lot of Barbarians and Archers. 56 Barbarians, 104 Archers against the Town Hall 11 base with basically maxed out uh, Town Hall 10 defenses. So, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to spread out my uh, giants and barbarians as I, as I created four entry points perfect I'm gonna send out my barbarian king towards the uh, direction of that lava hound because that lava hound is not gonna distract my barbarian king um, While I send out my archer queen on the other side towards the opening that I created with the earthquake spells uh, So that she doesn't get distracted by the lava hound as and my archers take out the lava hound And here I'm gonna place that rage spell and also freeze the multi infernal to keep my barbarians archers which is safe and uh then I'm going to also place another free spell, activate my eternal tome ability to protect my barbarian king from that eagle artillery damage. Awesome. So this is how you utilize that ability. You need to utilize it to counter the eagle artillery before it kills your king. But here my king died on the second shot, couldn't really uh, last, long, last, last for too long against that eagle artillery. Activate my uh, queen's royal cloak here, she's targeting the town hall, awesome, and she's going to take out the town hall. So this was amazing, this was actually a quite an amazing raid in my opinion because I still managed to get 1 star and 40% with basically G-Barge, a bunch of barbarians and archers and I managed to beat this base. Okay, check this out. An amazing find. Over 1 million in total resource. And they are inside the collectors, inside the base. So it's going to require more work. If I want to get everything, I'm going to have to 3-star this base. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use my Barbarians Ar and Archers to distract that single target Infernos. Uh, to protect my heroes and giants. And also send out my King and the Warden and the Witches up top. And have them core. And while I do that, I'm going to use my Archer Queen. I had two healers here. Don't ask me why. So uh, I'm going to use... the archer queen on the south to uh to remove those defenses i'm going to basically use her to do a queen walk a small queen walk here uh, of course two healers is not really sufficient but his defenses are pretty weak so hopefully that works so i'm going to send her out at the bottom and at the top as you can see my grand warden and my king are wrecking all the defenses up top while my uh, queen removes the defenses at the south as uh, all his resources his collectors and town hall are at the core so I just have to remove the side defenses and once I remove those defenses with my queen and my uh, king up there use the rage spell break inside get inside that core now he's being targeted by the uh, the single target inferno 
Uh, so I'm gonna have to pop my Eternal Tome ability, but I forgot about it because I was too worried. I was too focused on my Archer Queen at the south that I forgot about my King, so I lost him. Uh, but not to worry, I still have my Archer Queen, and there's only basically two uh, collectors left. The two Elixir collectors there, as my uh, Warden is gonna get the gold mine from the core, so I just have to get that last elixir collector and I can head out. I don't really have to three star the space, I can just go for the loot here and just head out. So perfect, I got everything. I got over 537 gold, uh, 537,000 gold, and 523,000 elixir. Awesome. So today was a much better day farming. I found a ton of resources, uh, lots of dead bases, and also storage raids with lots of resources inside the storages. So I managed to upgrade my laboratory to level 9 today, and also one of my elixir storages to level 12. So everything is looking great, and if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to give this video a thumbs up, and also subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you guys again soon in the next one. Later.